From drug trials to brain research, mice are critical to scientific studies. Some labs are just lousy with mice. And you know what science needs? More mice. Hi everyone, Julian here for DNews. The power of science derives from testing an idea over and over. Obviously, that raises ethical problems when something needs to be tested on humans. You can't just create a new drug and then immediately start trying it on people. Who knows what the side effects might be? That's why between test tube experiments and human trials, a new drug has to pass the gatekeeper that is Mus musculus, the humble lab mouse. Mice have been crucial to advancing science. They've contributed so much to so many fields that there's even a statue dedicated to them outside the Institute of Cytology and Genetics in Novosibirsk, Russia. Animal rights groups may not like it, but the mice's sacrifices have saved many a human life. Still, there's a bit of a problem. For years, decades even, studies have mostly been using male mice. When studies report what sex mice they used, males outnumber females five-fold, and in a survey of 1,200 papers, only 42% of them bothered reporting what sex their lab animals were at all, meaning that gap could be much greater. According to a Scientific American article by Brooke Burrell, the thinking was that male mice don't have that pesky hormone cycle female mice have, so their results would be more consistent. Once the male mice gave you a result, you could just extrapolate to females and start testing with humans. Well. Not to sound like a hackneyed comedian, but have you ever noticed that men and women are different? Our brains and bodies do not function identically, so if a drug is going to be used for both sexes, it's probably a good idea to know how that drug will affect each sex. The drug example Burrell gives is Ambien. As it turns out, many women metabolize the sleep aid much slower than men, to the point that they're still too impaired to drive the next day. It took 21 years for the FDA to half the recommended dose for women. Oh, incidentally, the U.S. National Institute of Health mandated the inclusion of women and minorities in clinical trials receiving their grant money in 1993, a year after Ambien was approved by the FDA. So, for over two decades, women have been represented in human trials, but female mice have been getting snubbed. The problem with excluding female mice is researchers might miss something important. Women have adverse reactions to prescription drugs more often than men do, with even a drug as innocuous as aspirin. A low dose has long been recommended to help prevent heart attacks, but according to a study published in the journal Heart in 2014, healthy women under 65 are more likely to suffer from intestinal bleeding from regular use. So since women are 1.5 to 1.7 times more likely to have an adverse drug reaction, it makes sense to have analogs that might catch that early. And they may benefit from certain drugs more too. One experiment looking into using oxytocin as an autism treatment used male and females of a strain that had problems socializing. The female mice started socializing more quickly than the males, suggesting oxytocin might be a more effective treatment for women than for men. Sex differences can also help point researchers in a new direction. For example, women are more susceptible to multiple sclerosis, but the disease is usually less severe. By studying male and female mice that suffer from a similar condition called rodent experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, it's been discovered that some genes on the Y chromosome may have a protective effect, while some genes on the X chromosome may cause the disease. With the benefits in mind, a year ago the NIH mandated that all research grant proposals submitted would either have to use both sexes or justify why they used only one. It's a pretty big deal considering the NIH funds over 300,000 researchers. But are those initial worries that a hormone cycle and behavioral differences would corrupt data justified. Jill Silverman of the University of California, Davis, has been using male and female mice in her autism research for years. When comparing how mice from six different strains performed on various behavioral tests, there was no significant difference between the sexes. That's not to say they don't exist, but it's more dependent on how the test is designed and what the researchers are looking for. Really, the biggest issue is cost. The number of mice used would need to double in some experiments, and they would have to be separated to make sure they don't breed. Silverman says she needs to use at least 20 mice in each test group to make her findings statistically significant, which usually means at least 60 mice per experiment. If that number doubles for other studies, taking care of twice as many mice over the course of months can inflate costs dramatically. Still, the benefit of finding out how something affects both sexes or discovering a new path for research to go down is probably going to be worth it in the long run. During this whole thing, you were probably wondering, why do we even use mice? Well, Trace has that covered right here. Scientists are using mice because they are small, they're easy to care for, and they have a high reproduction rate. Also, their genome has been sequenced, which is pretty important. I'm all for more females in STEM, even if they're fuzzy and tiny and white. Are you a woman in the STEM fields? What do you do? What's your take on mandatory female mice? And even if you're not, we want to hear your opinion anyway. Let us know in the comments, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time on DNews.